Hmm. I'm super excited and very lucky to have Bright Sellers sponsoring today's video because there aren't really too many things better in this life than receiving a box in the mail filled with beautiful bottles of wine. Bright Sellers is the best wine delivery service because you tell them what you like with a simple seven question quiz and then based on your taste, they customize your order with unique bottles. Each box comes with a little wine education card so you know what you're tasting and what part of the world it comes from. You can taste the entire world without leaving your house, which is crazy when you actually think about it. The best part for me was all the red wine they sent I had never tasted, and each one was great for different reasons. So if you're a wine sipper, then you have to take them up on this crazy offer of 50% off your first six bottle box. If you do the math, that's six bottles for the price of three. Thank you again, Bright Sellers, for giving my followers a limited time offer of 50% off of their first six bottle box. Click the link in the description to get started. Welcome to Twisted News, where we get you informed on some of the craziest stories currently happening all around the world. And for today, we tell of two stories involving mothers. One will take us to New York City's Coney Island, where we'll learn about a tragedy involving three children. And the other is a story of loss and hope regarding the search for a missing woman in Pennsylvania. Get ready for Scary Mysteries, Twisted News. Number one, three deaths on Coney Island. We all grow up hearing about different folk stories, myths, and urban legends from other places and cultures. These stories are primarily tragic, scary, or even both. The thing about old stories like these is that there's always the possibility that each one of them stemmed from a situation or event that actually happened. They only morphed into the folk tales, myths, and legends because of how the stories back then were passed on from one generation to the other by oral storytelling. When a narrative is passed on from one person to another by word of mouth, it's almost always to be expected that some details may either be omitted or exaggerated. And over time, they become almost extraordinary or fantastical for several reasons, but perhaps mainly, it's almost always hard to grasp that something dreadful could occur. And yet, this doesn't take away the fact that if that myth or urban legend is creepy or tragic, then it may not necessarily be far from the truth. The case we're about to dive into right now is reminiscent of a well-known Hispanic myth, the one of La Llorona, or the Weeping Woman. At about 1.40 a.m. on Monday, September 12, 2022, a 911 dispatcher received a call from a concerned relative regarding a young mother and her three children. There was no intruder or other people involved, though. The relative was concerned that the mother 30-year-old Erin Murdy would harm her children, as the mother herself had told them she would do. They asked for officers to check on the family home in an apartment located on Neptune Avenue in Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. Officers were dispatched to the apartment and found it unlocked and empty. In the same vicinity, they met a man who introduced himself as the father of one of the three children. The kids who were living there were identified as Zachary Murdy, who was seven years old, Liliana Murdy, who was four, and three-month-old Oliver Bondarev. He expressed the same concern for the three children that the relative who called 911 had had. And he suggested that the mom and her kids were most likely on Coney Island's boardwalk. So a tedious search for the family started, near the apartment complex at first, then on the boardwalk, and then at nearby hospitals. An hour and a half later, another 911 call was made alerting the authorities to a specific location on Brighton 6th Street and Ruggleman Boardwalk. And there, they were able to locate the mom, who at the time seemed distraught, walking barefoot and soaking wet with a robe on. She was with other family members, but the whereabouts of the children remained unknown. When they tried talking to Erin, one officer described her as nearly catatonic. 
At about 4.45 a.m., police found the three children just two miles away from where they found the mom. They were lying unconscious by the edge of the water on 35th Street. Officers immediately tried to perform CPR. However, the efforts to try to save their lives were all in vain as they were later pronounced dead at Coney Island Hospital. The next day, the medical examiner's office released the statement that the children had indeed died from drowning and that the manner of their deaths was ruled as a homicide. Initial investigations also revealed that it seemed like this incident was premeditated and not something that happened all of a sudden. It was also later revealed that Liliana even got bruised when Erin forced her down into the water. So Erin was brought into custody to be interviewed. Later that day, she was also brought to a psychiatric hospital for an evaluation. It was there that she told police that she had a dream about walking with her children toward the ocean, which turned out to be a tragedy that no one expected when it happened in real life. During preliminary investigations, police considered the possibility of the mother experiencing postpartum depression. There were also past domestic incidents where police were called, but no arrests were ever made. There was also no evidence or allegations that Erin was abusive to her children. And in addition to that, Erin's relatives also shared that she was going through a rough patch that may have contributed to her struggles. She had problems in the past regarding being behind and paying rent, was also going through custody battles for her older child. They also shared that their family has a history of mental illness. On September 14th, Erin was charged with three counts of murder for the deaths of her children and is currently held without bail. The day after that, the children were then finally laid to rest. This tragic incident is very much reminiscent of the tragedy behind the folk tale of La Llorona, a weeping woman who agonizes over the death of her children even in the afterlife. According to popular tales, a distraught mother consumed with blind rage threw her two children into a river. When she realized what she had done, she wailed in despair at her dead children, thus the name La Llorona. The only difference between these two was the despondence that the officers described seeing in the mother after finding her by the beach. Yet, there is also the possibility that we're not seeing her grief that is as great as the weeping woman's, despite not being as loud. Number 2. Search for Missing Upper Darby Woman For every family with a relative that's gone missing without a trace, useful tips regarding the case are always significant. These tips are usually followed by the police especially when the case remains active. Though they may seem unimportant to most people, these tips and clues usually act as an anchor for the family's hope that they will see their relative once again. And for the missing, these hints and leads are like their lifeline. The faster authorities can find and solve them, the better. However, there are cases out there that authorities don't give up on despite remaining unsolved for ages much like the case of the missing Upper Darby woman. On June 3rd, 2014, Joanne DeGuio woke up early to prepare to go to work after doing some errands. During that time, she shared a home in Upper Darby, Pennsylvania with one of her daughters, then 24-year-old Amanda DeGuio, who was a mother of two young girls herself. Just a few days prior, the family had returned from their trip to Disney World, which Joanne would later describe as filled with precious moments. Their clothes and suitcases from the trip hadn't been entirely unpacked yet, so Joanne asked her daughter to do these chores before she left for work. She told Amanda, who was still in her room, to do the laundry and to make sure that she doesn't forget the suitcases that were brought outside to air out something that she said they always did. Joanne also dressed up her granddaughters, and then she left for work. For the entire day, Joanne didn't hear from her daughter. She called her sometime during the day, but Amanda didn't answer. When she got home at about 5 in the afternoon, not only were the chores left undone, but 
Amanda herself was not home, and she hasn't come home since. Joanne, in several interviews, shared that it was normal for her daughter to leave the house for days with her friends. And if she did the same thing eight years ago, she didn't pack an overnight bag like she usually did and didn't have her phone or credit cards with her. She also didn't drive. More than a month later, on August 27, 2014, Amanda's younger sister, Nicole, finally informed the authorities about her missing sister by filing a missing persons report. According to her family, she was bipolar and had problems with drug use and addiction, and particularly heroin. However, after rigorous searches and investigations, the authorities weren't able to provide the family with any other leads or clues regarding her whereabouts. In 2018, the investigation was then shifted from the case being considered a missing persons case to having foul play involved. Recently, on September 15, 2022, more than eight years after she mysteriously disappeared, the Upper Darby police searched a Chester County farm after they received a tip regarding Amanda's case. However, no further details were made public by the authorities after that. Joanne, including Amanda's daughters, remained hopeful that Amanda is still out there, alive and well. She, along with the police, working tirelessly on this case, continue to seek the help of the public to share information they may have regarding Amanda. Remember, no tip is too small, so if you know anything, reach out. Hey, if you enjoyed that, then please do subscribe and check out some of our other videos that we know you'll be into. Thanks again so much for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.